Hey everyone, it's Tara with Sweet Country Glam and we have our amazing hot chocolate bar special. So let's get started. I hope you know that you can have hot chocolate anytime you want. It's not just limited to the Christmas holiday. You can go ahead and have an amazing spread for an anniversary, a birthday, or even a winter wedding. Whatever you do, have fun with it and get creative. All right, so I spent probably about $25, $30 on all of my baking and all my goodies that I needed. So let's go ahead and jump right on in and get this hot chocolate going. Grab your hot crock pot, turn it on high. I went and I put in a whole one of the Almond Breeze and then half of the second one. I did one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream and then I added my one can of condensed milk and then topped it off with two teaspoons of vanilla. And then I probably had about I would say a half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips in that bag. Now, I think it only called for a third, but I decided, well, I'll just go ahead and pour the rest of it in there. So I ended up adding a, probably about a three quarter cup of chocolate chips. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for a while. I just came back to check on it probably about 20 minutes in. Um, it probably needs about another 20, 25 minutes before it's ready. So all cook time, about 45 minutes. All right. Taste test time. Cheers, friends. It tasted absolutely amazing. It is time for the hot chocolate bombs. Now, this is my first time trying this out. My friend Sarah and I, we decided we were gonna give this a whirl. We got those melting wafers. We got them all melted. Used my little silicone molds that I got over off of Amazon. You can see the link down in the description. We put them in the freezer for about maybe 15, 20 minutes, took them out. They came out really nicely. Make sure you really get up around the edges. Like if you only have to do like one round and then come back and do a second round, I would recommend it. It would just make the rim of your hot chocolate bombs a little bit more sturdier. You can see we're throwing in all our hot chocolate mix, maybe a little bit of sprinkles, some extra marshmallows. You can never have enough marshmallows, right? So I have my burner on low just to get my little cookie sheet hot enough to melt the rim. This seemed to be the easiest method for me uh, to do this. So, and it worked out really well. Now, a little tip. Now, I was doing really good and then I decided, oh, well maybe I can melt the sides. No, wrong. I just made a gaping hole. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do what I did. Um, but honestly, I would say I probably got three good ones out of six, so that's okay. So then we got some of our vanilla bark and we put it in a baggie and I went and I cut way too much of a tip off of it. It came out super fast and like in a glob. So tip number two, make a smaller cut in the bag next time. So I decided, well, we're making these hot chocolate bomb macaroons. <laughs> I grabbed my little container of sprinkles and this worked out really nicely, actually. I got a kick out of it. My friend was the one that mentioned that they look like macaroons. So I'm just winging it at this point. So I went ahead, decorated the rest. I thought they came out for the most part pretty decent. They're very festive. Watch the magic. I grabbed my little coffee stir, added some extra dark chocolate pieces, topped them off with some extra marshmallows, some sprinkles, and of course, his favorite, chocolate chips. I saw this idea over on Pinterest, so I decided I was gonna give it a little bit of Christmas flair with my Christmas patterns that I was finding on Creative Fabrica. Super excited to print all of these cute ones out. Whatever I don't use, I'll just turn them into awesome Christmas cards. Okay, so what I decided to do is go ahead and measure them out at one and a half inches in width. And then I grabbed my paper cutter and got them all cut out. Now, once I was done with that, I decided I was gonna go ahead and grab one of my extra straws from my Starbucks cups that I've been making, and I'm just gonna practice going around the straw, just kind of getting an idea of what I want them to look like, and really just to see what they look like with the printed pattern on them. Now, something I didn't think about, and it was an afterthought, when I was in the process of doing my straws, 
I realized that printing them on an inkjet printer for this specific project probably wasn't the best idea because I want to make these actual drinking straws. I don't want this ink to bleed in your drinks. Be sure you have just colored cardstock and just even plain white cardstock. I heated up a fourth cup of water in the microwave and I added it to my fourth cup of cornstarch. And then I went ahead, just mixed it all up and it becomes a nice thick consistency. So then what I did next was I grabbed one of my jars that I had left over from another tutorial and I placed it in some water, turned on my burner, turned it on high. I grabbed my beeswax pellets and I got these over off of Amazon. And by the way, they smelled amazing because you can do makeup, candles, all kinds of stuff with this. So this has multiple purposes once you're done with it here. Now I wanted to make sure that I got at least three quarters of the way or maybe a fourth of the way up on my straws because I'm gonna end up having to use a spoon to scoop the rest. I don't wanna burn myself. So I added some of my cornstarch glue and I'm just curling it around my other straw just so that I have a nice mold for when I pull it off. And I just scrape off any of the extra glue. This stuff actually worked pretty good. It held up pretty decently. And trust me, you're not gonna taste it when you use it. But like I said, um, these were my pretty decorative straws. I wouldn't recommend putting these in a drink. I am gonna test it though. And you can see I'm just cutting off the tops where they kind of funneled and made a, a peak. And you can see that my beeswax is slowly melting. This probably took 30 minutes. So I just focused on making all my straws and now I am ready. I just dipped in one side. So I just wanted to see what it would look like, how it would go. And you know, the glue stayed, it didn't come unraveled. So I was pretty excited about that. Try not to burn myself. And it just kind of gives it a nice glossy clear finish. Now you can get little clumps of the wax. It's just kind of like a candle. So you do want to angle it down, move it around a lot so that it doesn't get all clumpy because you don't want to have like a big old piece of wax come off in your mouth when you're drinking. Gross. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm just using my spoon to scoop the beeswax down the center. And once I get all the way, probably three quarters of the way up, I'm gonna flip it around and then dunk the other end in and then that one will be done. And then you're just gonna repeat this process. Please be careful. This will probably be the part where the parents are doing this. The kids can be rolling the straws because of course this is definitely a fun family activity and with cardstock, very inexpensive, budget friendly, and you can make your own DIY straws. You don't have to worry about those plastic ones. So you can see here's a few that I've done. And for the most part, they look really good. And I went ahead and did a few just in the plain white cardstock. So you have to have signage for your hot chocolate bar. You don't want to overwhelm it, but you want to have a few. So here were two images that I snagged over off of Creative Fabrica. Love their holiday bundles. You're going to have to go and check them out. Now what I did is I did go over to Contour and I did hide Jesus and Hot Cocoa so that I could print those, or should I say cut those, in a different color vinyl. So you can always hide different words and then layer them. And here's a fun family challenge this Christmas season. Make your favorite Chex Mix recipe and vote to see who the winner is. Grab your hot cocoa and check out this video.